This small medical center treats wounded Russian military personnel. In two hours, more than 40 people were processed. The man began to stutter. This is a different hospital, but the situation is absolutely similar, there is a lack of linen and medicine, the corridors are clogged. Medical care in Russian troops has been somewhat horrendous and it seems like they're lagging decades behind when it comes to adequate treatment of their own forces. Earlier, UK Ministry of Defense said that up to 50% of Russian soldiers being killed in combat were dying preventable deaths. Russian soldiers were being advised to use women's sanitary products as first aid supplies. Another concern when it comes to battlefield medical care is how close the wounded are to a hospital. The Ukrainians have been resourceful in setting up care close to combat, using the basements of blown-out buildings as treatment centers or doling out care from trucks that can move at a moment's notice. Because Russia has targeted hospitals with strikes, Ukraine has also been somewhat forced to seek out more hidden spots to issue treatment. Still, Russia has one clear advantage over Ukraine that could compensate for their inferior medical care, the sheer number of potential soldiers, coupled with the long-standing Soviet military doctrine of throwing waves of people at your enemy. Putin prepares to imprison more Russian generals, military elite may revolt against the president. Mass layoffs continue in the Russian Ministry of Defense. The arrest of the head of the main directorate of the Russian Armed Forces, General Vadim Shamarin, was the fourth arrest of a high-ranking official from the Defense Department over the past month. The number of arrests among Russian generals will increase significantly in the near future. Russian human rights activist Vladimir Osechkin told Channel 24 about this, explaining why the so-called purge began in the first place. Recently, it was reported that the head of the Russian Armed Forces Directorate and Deputy Chief of the General Staff, Lieutenant General Vadim Shamarin, had been detained. In mid-May, head of the Personnel Department of the Russian Ministry of Defense, Yuri Kuznetsov, was detained and arrested in connection with a bribe case. And the purges in the Russian Ministry of Defense began with suspicion of Sergei Shoigu's deputy, Timur Ivanov. In April, rumors not only began to be spread within the security bloc through the Ministry of Defense, but the option of an armed rebellion was also being developed by a number of units of the regular army. This, of course, could not help but cause hysteria in the Kremlin. The FSO and FSB, loyal to him and Putin, developed a special operation which they call among themselves thieves in uniform, emphasized Vladimir Osechkin. The Russian generals are an absolutely corrupt community, which for more than 10 years has been earning huge amounts of money measured in billions. They profited from everything, both from the war and the exercises. At the same time, they built the foundations of this war so that with its help, they could remain in their positions for a certain number of years until the end. So because of the war, they wrote off a huge amount of money, increasing their budgets. What is happening now is a cleansing of the entire leadership of the Ministry of Defense and the systematic detention of those individuals who were dissatisfied with Putin's policies. Osechkin noted, the lava of arrested generals will be replenished. This is not surprising because now at the head of the enemy, Ministry of Defense, there is one of Vladimir Putin's main accountants, whose function is not war, but militarization and exposure of the multi-million dollar hole in the economy that Shoigu and his henchmen created. Moreover, more and more people who did not resist Prigozhin's rebellion in 2023, as well as those who sympathized with the death of Yevgeny Prigozhin and co-founder of the Wagner, Dmitry Utkin, will end up in pre-trial detention centers. In particular, information may soon appear about the detention of the already half-forgotten Sergei Sorovikin, the ex-commander-in-chief of the Russian Aerospace Forces, who is directly associated with the beginning of Prigozhin's rebellion. But none of this would have happened if not for the powerful resistance to the Russian occupation on the part of the Ukrainian armed forces and the Ukrainian people. In some ways, the arrests of the generals of Shoigu's team are the result, in particular, of decisive steps by the Ukrainian army, Osechkin added. In this case, military elite may revolt against the president.